is this crazy idea going around that biology is easy and physics is hard. And I am going to change your mind on this because physics is the easiest one. It's the easiest one to pick up the most marks on because biology throws a lot of context at you, doesn't it, Prim? Yes, it does. It throws a lot of context at you, it throws a lot of graph interpretation at you, which um, this is all your AO2, your application, which can be a little bit of a shocker because this is stuff you won't have covered in class. Whereas in physics, the new and surprising things they throw at you are maths questions, structured maths questions. And I can teach you how to do structured maths questions. They're really, really easy once you learn how to do them. So it is actually much easier to get a grade nine in physics than it is in biology. So this is how to get a grade nine in physics. Now for these structured maths questions, this is 30% of the grade. Now I've looked at the past few papers and even though the, it's supposed to be 30% of the grade, it's actually a bit closer to 50% of the grade. Now this is probably just a difference in opinion between me and the example as to what they actually count as a maths question. Do they count writing down the equation as a maths question? I have, they might not have done. So if you just did the maths questions, then you'd actually manage to just get a grade five on the exam straight away, which is lovely and easy. Because if you follow the method that I recommend, these questions are not hard at all. Now I've done loads and loads of videos on how to do the maths in um, physics questions, and I did a whole workshop on it over Easter, which you can go and watch, it's on my YouTube channel, where I walk through loads and loads of questions, slowly working through this method. Um, really, really hard questions, aimed at grade eight, nine students. And when I break it down, you can actually see those questions are not very hard at all. But what I want you to do, very briefly, um, what I want you to do is to get your highlights out, highlight those numbers in the question, so that all of the context, all the rest of the words, well, we don't really need to pay attention to those. Pull out the numbers, write yourself a little key on the side, find an equation, write the equation down in full, substitute into that equation, sort out any units you need to sort out, then rearrange it, and then the actual bit that is some maths, plug the numbers into a calculator and write down the units. So my number one tip for getting grade nine in physics is get comfortable doing those maths questions because they are a big, big chunk of the paper. They are not hard once you know the, the technique, the skills on how to do them. And actually they take up loads and loads of your mark. And then my number two tip for getting a grade nine in physics is learn your units. You cannot interpret those maths questions unless you learn your, your, learn your units. Mm, words. And then a few years ago, we were all in for a big shocker when the last question on physics paper one, I think, was give the units for specific heat capacity, which deals with kilogram degrees C, and it's one that everyone kind of like, oh, it's really hard, I'm just going to ignore that. But you know, that one mark right at the end of the paper, the examiners put it there because they knew people don't learn their units, so please learn your units. Now, I know this year you're going to give me the equation sheet, but the equation sheet doesn't have units on, so please learn your units. I've got free flashcards for you on my website. You can go and download these, but please learn them. The other thing that comes up so, so frequently is learning your keywords. So things like define this, define that. This could easily be a two or even a three mark question in physics. So my tip number three for getting grade nine in physics is to learn your keywords. Learn your keywords really, really well. Tip number four for getting grade nine in physics is to learn your six mark questions. Now, there are a limited number of examples they could use and they could adapt them in various different ways. So, I mean, they might always come up with something completely off the bat for their six mark question, but if you practice doing your six mark questions and learn what the answers are to these, um, and if you can go and recognize the question in the exam, and even if it doesn't actually come as a six mark question, even if it comes up as a four mark question, well, you still know six points for it. So that's really, really good. And um, we're talking about like the advantages and disadvantages of electricity generation. Loads and loads of times that comes up and there's loads and loads of stuff you can write for that. Uh, we're talking about the forces on a skydiver. That comes up so many times. Um, just go and learn that standard stock answer. There are so many different things you can learn here. So many questions that keep coming up over and over again. And um, like I said at the beginning, biology, they love being inventive and throwing crazy, crazy context in there. Physics is a lot more regulated, it's a lot more stable, which is why I think it's a lot, actually a lot easier to get better marks in, in physics. Um, and my number five reason why physics is easier to get a grade nine in than biology is because it comes right at the end. And everybody, if you're revising over the Easter holidays, everybody starts revising with biology. 
biology paper one because it comes first. And then by the time we get around to physics paper two, everyone's exhausted and they stop revising, which is why people tend to do worse on physics paper two because it's at the end, um, which is why you can really, really take advantage of this if you really, really push for physics. Uh, especially physics paper two, if you really, really smash that out, you're going to be well ahead of everyone else in the field. And that is what it is about when we are getting marks, being ahead of everybody else. Um, if you want to see examples of me working through loads of questions, of the, the six mark questions, of the mathy questions, the, I've done all of these videos for you. So linked in the description down below is a link to the walkthrough for this year's predictive paper, um, where I take you through all of these type of questions. And I show you how to answer all of these sorts of things, as well as the workshops I did on how to do the maths in physics bits um, and the grade nine, grade eight um, in physics workshops that I did. Um, I hope you believe me, guys, because I genuinely believe that I'm right. I know I can say that because I'm biased, because I'm me. Um, but I think it is easier to get a grade nine in physics than it is to get a grade nine in biology. Ouch! This is why in some videos I like explain scratches. <laughs>